Make sure to bring the lyrics. Yes. I, you, I've seen musicians forget the lyrics of the national anthem. Oh, yeah. I did it for oh, NASCAR on, na on national television. Did and, you? Yeah, and I did the stanky leg the whole time because my knee was just <laughs> was going nuts. But <laughs> it was terrible. Like... Hello and thank you for listening to the Maximum Mediocrity Podcast. My name is David Shockley. And I'm Morgan Miller. This is the podcast that interviews people that aren't famous, but should be. Today we are joined by lead singer of the band Chaplin the Kid, Patrick Liberator. Patrick, welcome to the show. Thank you, how are you? Doing great. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. I did say your name last name correctly. You right? did. I was uh, I was concerned because with a name that awesome, there had to have been some type of catch <laughs> to it. <laughs> oh yeah. Seriously, he asked me four times that that was your real last name. Mm -hmm. I did. It I did. is. It is. It, it, if people don't believe me, it's just the uh, it's just my secret name, so nobody else knows who I am, who, I, who what my real name is. But no, that's that is my real name, and <laughs> everybody says Libertor, Libertore, and I'm just like. Mm. That's what I thought it was, honestly. But butchering it. <laughs> no, Liberator is true. And uh, I don't know, everybody thinks it's a stage name. But I was like, all right, well, we'll just go with that. You're just a natural stage name. You're just, you were born to be a performer. Yeah, You're born into I hope family. so, absolutely. Uh, so you are here. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your music? So we are a Southern Alternative. Uh, we were just talking about earlier before the show that it's uh, just a different style. I mean, I know a lot of people listen to country music now as uh, pop and to me, I kind of felt like taking different genres like hard rock, country, uh, alternative, and just kind of intertwining them together and making something different where it's not your normal style country music. Hmm. And because I don't sound country, I don't have any twang to my voice other than my dad being from Maryland and my mom being from Alabama. That's it. <laughs> so I'll put that right out there. It is, you know, we just like to be us. We're just multi-genre and we don't like to hold any bars. We like to just reach for the sky. And how long have you been a musician for? Since I was 16. Uh, I've been, well, I was a drummer at the age of four um, and just taught myself. And at 16, I started to do more touring professionally. Um, and just this past year, I actually made it my job. So it was just time for me to leave the nine to five job and just continue my dream and you know whatever happens happens and you just don't give up if you want to be the best work harder than the rest and that's kind of my motto throughout this whole thing what made you take the leap from the going full-time i think that's an incredibly intimidating step i'm sure it took a lot of thought for that uh, it did um you know i remember at the time my fiance who is now my wife uh we were speaking on just certain things that like you get one life to live uh normal you know normally you get 80 years if you live a healthy life normally on an average. And I was like, you know, here's the deal. If I'm going to do music and I'm going to take my weekends where that's the only time at that point that we got to hang out. Hi, kitty. How are you? <laughs> and uh, we... No, uh, he's good. You could be a part of this, uh, this interview too. Yes. That's uh, that's Liberace the cat. I'm sorry. Yeah, how are you? You got the nice color and everything. And uh, for me, I just let her. I, I just told her that, hey, if I'm going to do music like part time, it's like a full time job. You want to get full time. And for me at the time, we were doing part time gigs on the weekends. And then finally, she said, "Here's the deal. You've been a preschool teacher for seven years. What are you going to? What are you going to do with your life if?" That doesn't work. You know, you're so good at making these songs. What are you going to do about it? So I so what, just took 24 hours later. All right, here's the deal. Called up my boss. I'm done. Thank you. And goodbye. And hung up. I looked at my dad and I said, here we go. And he was like, what do you mean, here we go? I was like, well, quit my job. Let's go buy thousands of dollars in sound equipment, instruments, all of this. We're going the whole nine. And there we go. And uh, we, now we got a Nashville booking agent a year later. And That's right. Yeah, I saw that you got the booking agent. So is that different from like being signed to a label? It's just they just do your booking. Yeah. So how it all works out is uh, for your booking agent, sometimes there are booking agents where they will have uh, PR people or it will be tangled with a, with a record label or so, some type of that sort or an entertainment uh, like deal. For these people, it's all just booking, and um, they are strictly on just country artists. But the one thing about us was they wanted to take on a different style, multi-genre that has a southern twist, and give it a try. So it's like 
21 pilots, but in the Southern realm. That's literally how we are. It's the way you watch 21, we just have just one more extra person. We have three guys, uh, one's a drummer, one's my bass player, and then myself that sings. We backtrack all of our guitar work. We will sometimes backtrack drums, so then the drums sound a little bit more full. Uh, mm -hmm. Bass we backtrack, so it sounds like there's two basses. Um, and then for myself, I'll backtrack my vocals where I can harmonize, I can do all that, so it sounds like two or three of me in one. So it's uh, so a three-piece band sounds like an eight to 10-piece band, and it's just all created and just intertwined into our shows. And how did you learn to do that type of editing? I think a <sighs> lot of people that start a band, and this is one of the reasons why we want to have you on, is because you've breached that next threshold mm -hmm. from being that garage band mm -hmm. of just a bunch of just a bunch of kids hanging out in a basement, Absolutely. you know, making some songs to, oh, this is my life now. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's stuff that gets lost in the mixes that, Absolutely. yeah, you have to do overtracking and uh, overdubbing vocals and mm -hmm. that type of stuff. Uh, do you know where... You, where you kind of started to pick that up? I did. Um, so when I was in a metal band uh, in the beginning of all of my musical career, I got to work with some big time producers. Uh, Mike Watts from, um, he was in uh, Stat, was it New York? Staten Island, New York? Or Port Jefferson? And he was one of like the coolest guys that I got to meet. But for me, uh, Jason Roush from Zero by One Sound Studios, that guy helped me through everything, the good, the bad, the evil. Um, he worked on tons of cartoon shows, but he was the one guy that actually helped me kind of mold myself. Um, and it kind of got to the point where I was lost inside of all of this music because I didn't know where I was supposed to be, um, what I was supposed to do. And I remember him sitting me down. And he said, here's the deal. You're going to take the wheel. I recorded all your stuff. Now you get to turn knobs. I'm like, um, Neo. Okay, here we go. Not knowing what I'm doing. He's like, I'm not going to tell you what you're doing. I'm just going to, I want you to do it. Kid in a candy store. Absolutely. So I'm just hitting knobs and push the buttons. Things are starting to shoot up. And I'm just like, all right, cool. Here we go. And at the end of the product, it started to sound really good. And he came in and was like, are you done? Let me give it a, let me give it a listen. And he was like, okay. I didn't expect that. I thought something else was going to be kind of down. There was a couple things missing. Uh, but yeah, it started to sound really good. And it's, I started to learn that trait of, okay, if I'm in the zone, it's just me and the analog or me and the music. So now what we do is for myself, I would start buying beats off of the internet and I would piece it. So I would take the guitars out, bass out, drums out and piece it like a puzzle and intertwine them and make them sound differently than what I bought it as. And I remember sitting down with the band and I was like, so do you guys want to do it? together and they're like no because because <laughs> what we're doing here is absolutely so much cooler than recording these songs because when you sit down you get irritated you're like okay well you don't want it to sound like this song or this song and they were like dude let's just keep buying beats and intertwine them together and let's just try something new so we did and that's kind of how it was and then i would send them the song they would learn it we'd go out on the road and we tour for months on end People, people dig it. So, you know, I never wanted to change anything that wasn't broken. Uh, just like the saying, don't fix something that's not broken. And ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, exactly. That's what my for, father used to say. And for me, it's true. I would always have fear, anxiety issues of being on stage when, I'm, when I have a backtrack behind me of me singing because everybody's like, dude, you have a voice, you don't need that. Well, that's not what it's portraying. It's portraying so that I can have, so I don't need somebody else singing with me. Those guys can deal with their instruments and pay attention to that and give the crowd everything they got. Me, I'll take the vocals. Let me, I'll handle all that. So there was times where I wanted to take him out and we tried it and it was like, absolutely, um, it was empty. It was like, there was nothing there. You okay? There was a spider on me. Oh. That's what happened. <laughs> She that's a spider on yeah, that I was like, man, that feels so fucking weird. And I looked down, there's this like little black spider, like the size of like <laughs> it was the look of pure terror. I was like, oh, is she all right? <laughs> <laughs> now that we have a moment, uh, it's okay. Spider I never moment. Had this. <laughs> yeah, to uh, what we I think Morgan, I think you need to calm down a little bit. I think it's time. I think you need a shot. Oh, thank God, <laughs> that was horrifying. <laughs> Yeah, we saw a spider. What was it like? The size of like a half dollar the other day, and it was one of those wolf spiders. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> that, that thing's wicked looking. So you guys take your shot. <laughs> Cheers. 
Oh, that is not a prop. <laughs> I'm guessing that was uh, tequila. Yeah, what, Morgan, what was that? Oh, that's New Amsterdam vodka. Whew. Straight vodka. Mm-hmm. What time is it? What time is it? One thirty. Yep, that's time to start drinking vodka, I guess. One thirty-three. Yeah, oh, no. that, that was pretty harsh. I, I, <laughs> I love whiskey, and I don't think I normally ever take a shot of whiskey like that. Yeah, that was that was rough. We, me and Morgan, we went out last night, mm-hmm. and and we were drinking. I was drinking whiskey essentially the whole night, and you know, I woke up this morning. I was like, oh, that was just a little too much. Oh, absolutely. And it's like, what time's the podcast? Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's fine. I came over, and he's like, so how do you feel? And I was like normal yeah i had like i wasn't drinking whiskey all night i had two like i think i had three beers while we were there the whole time Mm -hmm. so i was like what do you mean how do i feel oh god i remember the time we uh i had uh moonshine it was all day all day it was like five different moonshines and that is just not Mm -hmm. i remember (laughs) we went to the carolinas and we played this one uh this one festival this guy handed me a mason jar and it was purple i was like oh this is going to be cool. And I'm just like, oh, okay, what is it? And I thought it was Kool-Aid. <laughs> well, I drank Purple it. drank. And it tasted like Kool-Aid. And yeah, everything just went dark. <laughs> just from there. And it was like, whoo, and you're never going to do that anymore. That's what they call the purple haze. Uh, pretty <laughs> you, much. Do you know how you can tell when you're getting good moonshine? Uh-oh. When you ask the guy, how was it made? He'll say, it's day staled. <laughs> yeah, they stale. I've gotten moonshine a few times, and when they say it's they stale, it's been the best shit ever. Oh, absolutely. When they I say think it's, it's like when it's ran through like two or three times, it gets even smoother and it's deadly. But yeah. if it's ran through one, it's really, really harsh. It's like, that's like corn, uh, corn whiskey is like my favorite. Um, that is like corn whiskey. So I don't think I've ever heard of this corn whiskey. They have this one corn whiskey, so it's like a fire, like fireball, mm-hmm. but. It's whiskey. It's like weird. It's very weird. Um, Cause I know Fireball. Isn't Fireball whiskey? It is, but it's not corn whiskey. It's weird how to explain. Cause even I thought like, uh, yeah. isn't it the same thing? Like I'm, I'm like arguing with these people. No, it's the same thing. You're cheating and liars. Yeah, it's like, it's just a different company. And it's they're like, no, 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 hold on. And no, it is, it is different. Um, you got to pick. Corn whiskey, yeah, look at that. I love the bottle. It's like a ceramic bottle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. P- Platte Valley or P- Platte Valley or Platte Valley. Platte Valley. Platte. And <laughs> it's amazing. It, so the, so our band came over the first time and uh, they were like, yo, what, what's that stuff? And I'm just like, can't touch it. Right. Because I had a little cork and, you know, and you pop it up. They're like, uh, oh, oh my God. So satisfying. So I poured it. Is that so, the, not the most satisfying Oh, noise? it is. It's like... Mm. You put the ice in there and you just hear this thing just trickling down, just right in the cup. And they're like, bro. So then we put Pepsi in there and that's all she wrote. <laughs> that's all she wrote. It is like eating big red gum, just drinking it. And then I woke up at home. Oh, dude, it was great. <laughs> I woke up. I remember my uh, wife has a picture of me wrapped up in a cocoon pretty, pretty much. And she was like, how was your night? It was amazing. It was just great. But then from there, I just kind of stopped drinking. <laughs> it was just, it didn't feel great. I just wanted to just tell her that <laughs> so I could just continue it. So David just reminded me, mm-hmm. can you explain your band name a little bit? Okay. So Chaplin the Kid. Sounds like a hip hop name. It's great. Um, nope. It is not close to hip hop. Uh, so Ch- Charlie Chaplin was always a big inspiration to me other than Freddie Mercury. And we'll get into him later. Uh, Charlie Chaplin just, to me, sh- showed the prime effort of what emotion should be. Uh, watching all of these black and white films where you just walk and you see how his day was. Uh, either he was just really happy or just really sad. And in all of the, his movies, everything he did, uh, he, there was one thing that inspired me the most, and it was that he cared about what he did. His emotion really shows through. Absolutely. And when you're on stage... You have to show your fans that you love what you do and you love that they're there. Um, And for myself, I remember watching this movie in high school called The Kid featuring Charlie Chaplin. And my dad and I, my mom and I, we've all been super close, like my whole family, sister, the whole nine. And a a bond between a father and son is one of the biggest things in my life. Um, I, I mean, my dad grew up being my baseball coach, my basketball coach, my football coach, uh, owning a baseball team for travel, music, all of these things. And it just kind of came to me that 
this movie is inspired by a father and son bond. So Chaplin the kid. And it kind of grew into, all right, so how are we going to do this? And now we just announced having a baby and the thing is oh, now- congratulations. Thank you. And now it's Chaplin is having a kid. Aw, uh, how so, cute is that? So we've been, we've been talking about- That's a hashtag if I ever heard of Exactly. So now we, we will do that actually. It's funny that you say that. And then we're going to do like a t-shirt. So I, mine says Chaplin. And the little one says the kid. Oh, we'll walk around. It'd be cool. I think that'd be great. But it's too cute. That's disgustingly <laughs> cute. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's just, but yeah, that's how the name came to be. And it was just more of wanting to come up with a name that had a meaning and not just a cool look. Like, oh, that sounds cool. Uh, but mine was, okay, that's different. His music does not match it. I like, I'm sold. I'm buying in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a contrast. Absolutely. It, there was a lot of times people were, very hesitant, and there were we still have hard times getting shows. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. We, with the name, with the music, people don't understand the showmanship that we bring. Like we want to bring the energy, and we've had so many people ask, like, why, why aren't you acoustic? My simple answer is, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Uh, I will come out with a couple acoustic songs. I don't want to do a whole set. And I remember I was trying to be sold on gotta be acoustic that's gonna sell you this no i'm not gonna be acoustic and i've i've gotten rid of people for that because i i have a vision i know what i want to see and i know what people want to see they don't want to buy tickets to go see an acoustic show all the time nobody does no. i'm so glad you said yeah, that i've wants... never wanted to go see one yeah. i'll be honest now yeah. now i mean it's easy to to get to the show which is you acoustic guitar get on stage one plug one mic you're in and you're rolling yeah and, and it's like there is times where i'd like to sit down when i've seen the band already hmm I've seen that they had a couple acoustic songs. Could you play them live for us? That would be great. Absolutely. Those are great. We'll bring it back in. Um, you know, and like I said, our guitarist is all backtracked. So my bass player, all that. So they will play it as this backtrack goes on. And we have piano songs of, of some of our music. We have acoustic songs of some of our music. And it's just, and then we have ukulele. We'll play ukulele. I'll do like some Elvis music to, for like the older crowd and just kind of get them intrigued. Is it is a ukulele, I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Ukulele, it's the greatest instrument, right? Oh, absolutely. It's adorable. Uh, other than drums, absolutely. Uh, uh, drums, of I just course. can't, I mean, other than if you have a bop kit, which was uh, created by Questlove and you're traveling around like places like New York and it needs to be like a suitcase, Absolutely, I would go with the ukulele. Ukulele is great. And 21 Pilot Pilots, you mentioned them a few times. Oh, yeah. Big ukulele guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tyler Joseph. I mean, I have their tattoos all over my fingers. And uh, I'm just. Oh, wow, you do? Yeah. I did not even notice that. I've been looking at your tattoos emotion. a little bit there. You yeah. Guys, you're all tatted up. <laughs> it's. I do your tattoos have any like special meaning to you or oh, is yeah. it just uh like i really like that so i got it kind um, of thing sometimes it is not all the time but like this my right arm is all the great gatsby Aww, uh so i'm I a love huge that. yeah so it just symbolizes myself and my wife and just just a, a picture of beauty in my eyes uh this arm here is all family like my grandfather we didn't read the end yeah that was terrible <laughs> doesn't end well for yeah no he doesn't but, okay so, hours switched <laughs> but this one here my grandfather he passed away about six seven years ago he was a huge inspiration to me to pretty much helped me uh, start the music and my dad followed up with just being like the light for me to keep it lit up. So that was that That's to me. That's pretty impressive. It's very hard to get a good like portrait done. Yeah, and yeah, this, I th portrait. this has been done six or seven years right when he passed away, I got it done. So it held up. Um, SJC is the drum company I drum for. Chap on the kid, I did the logo. And then a lot of this stuff is all family in my life. And, I w and then we went to California and went out to Hollywood and yeah, I just got the eye of Anubis, because I just thought, hey, get a tattoo in Hollywood. Nobody really ever gets to say that. And we just did that. So if there's any random, it would be that one. Is there a tattoo that you had to talk yourself out of? It doesn't look like there has been. Um, <laughs> uh, I would, if there was anything, I would probably say the, the rest in peace, um, just because this actually symbolizes all the people that doubted me. And so that's why I tattooed rest in peace there because it always symbolizes that you, the people that made fun of you, you're killing them with your music and you got it, mm -hmm. you're doing it. So, but it's like, cause I'm not that type of person. Uh, but then it kind of, you, you go back and you're like, all right, I like it. But then you kind of hate it at the same time. Cause you wish that you could just kind of just sever ties and you're, you know, you just were cool. I, if there was anything, it would probably be probably that one. Probably that one. Yeah. 
quell the haters a little bit. But oh, yeah. you're right, I understand it. It kind of kind of that's one thing about tattoos. Like, I only have one tattoo mm-hmm. because I'm so scared that I'm going to get a tattoo for a reason and then I'm going to change that reason later on. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, this is a representation of me now, but will oh, yeah. that be a representation of me I mean, of me people later? come to me, it's like when you try to get a nine to five job, like I have two nose rings and like over 80 tattoos and people are like, oh, oh, you, you, you're just a terrible person. And I'm just like, um, <clears throat> oh, you're like, damn right. <laughs> Thanks. How so would did you, you know? <laughs> would you like to see that? <laughs> then they start seeing your shows and how you bring children up on stage and you allow them to take the microphone and sing your song. And they're like, oh no, this guy ain't bad. So that's why I got away really personally from the nine to five and all that. So, but other than that, I mean, huge Batman fan had to put ha ha. Cause I love the Joker. So I had to put that across my finger. So when I point at people, it's, it's just laughing at them. So, <laughs> so, I mean, but other than that, no, no, there's no tattoo. I really ever regret other than I put it on my body. Cause I wanted to represent me as like a walking comic book. So, I love it. I want to ask a little bit about country music. Okay. Um, can you tell me what your favorite country song is and why it's Take Me Home Country Roads by John Denver? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was a good touch. That was a good touch. And if it to a place I belong. That's a good touch. <laughs> that is. Uh, <laughs> other than that one, I'm a big Broken Halo guy from Chris Stapleton. I love Broken Halo because a lot of people, uh, I mean, we all go through uh, some very tough love stories and we go through a lot of tough family matters. uh, And sometimes you feel like you have a broken halo over you because you try to be the nicest person, wear your heart on your sleeve, and it never goes that way at the end of the book. So it's usually you're typically the bad guy unless it's and they live happily ever after, which they don't make those books much anymore. So I would say Broken Halo. But that one's good. That that (laughs) one was good. I'll give you that one. I'll be honest. I'm a huge country fan. Okay. uh, Anything outlaw country, I'm in. Okay. But I have to ask you. Uh Uh-oh. Who plays the meanest guitar in all country? (sighs) Oh, man. Well, if I, it would be a sin if I said, if I don't say Johnny Cash, which would be absolutely terrible. But for me. For me. For me. For me. Oh, God. Bill Burr has ruined us. I know. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I would... I mean, you could say Brantley Gilbert. You could say me, Chris Stapleton, because the guy is just... An, he just sits there and he can just give you everything. It's just like you watch him. You can fall asleep to it peacefully. You can just be amazed and just... It, it just doesn't take you away. So if, if he if he ever hears this, yeah, I would, I would say Chris Stapleton and I would then say... would. Johnny Cash would be probably my second. Johnny Cash is also very good. Yeah. I mean, off the top of my head right now. We're throwing these curveball questions. Yeah, on the top of my head. There's probably, and it's funny, if you give me the name, be like, oh, good Lord. Yeah, yeah, I knew him too, but they would probably be my top two. That's, I think it's a good answer. Unless Leonard Skinner can be placed in that because they were Southern Rock. Yeah, it totally counts. So I would, yeah, but then if you want to throw them in there, they'll just take the whole championship because those guys were just, wow. Just gods on the Oh my God. Um, As a country musician, can you give us some step-by-step instructions on how to, in fact, let the good times roll? Just be yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Just really, just be yourself, you know. Step one, be yourself. Be yourself. Step two, don't allow anybody to take you away from what you feel is going to be good. Just be yourself. Here's my my number three point. If you want to be the best, work harder than the rest. Because if you don't work harder than anybody, you're going to be generic. Do you think Hank would have done it this way? Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Because, I mean, think about it, Hank Williams. This, this think about it. Just try to fathom that name, right? Mm -hmm. He wasn't, I mean, music was different back then. We had no social media. We had no iPhones. We had nothing to promote us at home. We had to get out in the fresh air, cold weather, hot weather, whatever. You had to promote it. We had venues that were actually open and not closing down. We had hope, which is not there anymore because now social media is so drowned out by the millions and millions of people, you're never heard. So podcasts now are like the biggest thing because your friends will hear it and then their friends will hear it. And then they're like, oh, well, who's this guy? We're hip, Morgan. Yeah, you're hip. We're in. We're in there like swimwear. And that's the thing. And so would Hank do it? Absolutely. I think that if he was... 
you, if he was his younger age at this point, it may be a little bit different, but from your Elvises, your Hanks, I mean, Twitties of the world, Ooh. no, they would never change what they've done because they're iconic and they are absolute legends. And if I would say that I would want to be like them, absolutely, but I would want people to remember my name. So, mm. yeah. So Hank would not do it differently at all. Oh, I never asked if Hank would do it differently. I just was asking, do you think Hank would do it the way you're doing it? I want to do it the way he did it. That's the real answer right there. Uh, 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 but, but if I do it the way he did it, I'm just a, another generic person because he started something. Mm -hmm. So if I want to be like Hank, the only thing I would ever say is let me just be born back then because it was a lot different if I could take what he's done. But no, I don't think any artist from Hank to Freddie, to Chris Stapleton, any of that, I don't think I want to be like them. I actually, I'd like to make my music so big that they're like, wow. That kid did it all on his own. Never knew the kid until he just popped up out of nowhere from Delaware. That's what I want to be. Arguably, just like Hank. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Look at that little smirk that just went across his face. Did you, did you catch that, Morgan? Maybe. Let's get a replay on that video. <laughs> Slow mo. See exactly when Maybe. it happened. Maybe. <laughs> but no, no, you, you, you do have a point. And yeah, maybe um, if I could take some attributes from him. Absolutely. But would I want to do it 100%? Oh, you wouldn't make it. Yeah, absolutely. People don't like it anymore. Absolutely. But Hank is a man. I do think about this. You mentioned, like, the only reason that Hank got so famous is because he was back then. Do you think that if classic musicians, like, famous musicians that we know about, <laughs> do you think that they were going to be in today's world and try that? Do you think we'd know anything about them? Um, I think we would. Because if we never heard of those things then yes, because it's new. But if we have heard of those things, like Led Zeppelin, for instance, mm. what's another band that sounds exactly like them nowadays? Greta Van Fleet. And everybody's hard on them. I mean, the kid sounds exactly like the singer of Led Zeppelin. It, to the point, it's you would think it's Led Zeppelin, and they just wrote a new album. And for them, that's what they were inspired off of. So, I mean, and I, I guess that's that kid's voice because you can't change your voice. I mean, it's like you can't rewrite God's plan. You I'm just, just saying, I think you should talk to some of the country artists nowadays because mm -hmm. they are trying to change their voice to pander to an audience that... um. Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, when you listen to us, you hear the country twang in the music, not in my voice. I was going to say, I don't think, like, it's... <laughs> You know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. a lot of modern country music is a forced twang. It's not, like, they natural. They try to talk like this. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Oh, to yeah. me, it just seems just a touch pandering. Absolutely. You can hear how it's like, okay, you don't sound like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk, it's like, no. No, like, come back over here. We're going we're gonna to reevaluate this situation. And, you know, for myself, it's now, I mean, I just sing it the way my voice is. I have a raspy voice, so I utilize it. Like, mm -hmm. guys, like... Uh, M Shadows from Avenged Sevenfold. He mm -hmm. has that very unique voice. Don't ever get rid of it. Just sing, sing it. People will determine and title whatever they want to title it as. And for me, that's why I came up with Southern Alternative. Or if somebody says, what genre are you? We're Chaplin the Kid. And just come out to a show. You can come up with your own genre. And that's it. And, but from, from the first song to the last song, there is not one ounce of losing energy ever. I mean, I think we try to make the crowd sweat. Like they moved, like they just did P90X. That's our goal, you know? <laughs> so by the time it's all said and done, we've lost about 10 pounds throughout the show, but that's what we want. We, if you're paying $10 to get in, we want to give you $50 worth. Fun Can fact, do? I've actually been to one of your shows. Have you? I have. Uh-oh. I saw you at the Deer Park last year sometime and I can vouch there's a lot of energy on hey, that stage. I like it. I like it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Investigative journalism over yeah, there. Yeah, I almost jumped in the crowd. <laughs> I wanted to crowd surf so bad, and I was like, it's a lot of drunk college kids probably in here. And I was like, this is not going to be good. I was going to say, I think there were too many women in the crowd to carry you. Yeah, you would have like, just gone right yeah, on the ground. Splat. Like, I mean, you already ended up on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. The falling on the stage. That was great. And it, that was on purpose. Uh, I, Whatever helps you sleep at night. Yeah, I fall. I will legitimately plank and fall backwards. And it's just great. And everyone's like, yo, is he dead? And it's during one of our songs. And they're like, oh, oh, 
oh, okay. And there was there was one, kind, not controversy, but there was some people that kind of brought it up, but it wasn't in a bad realm, where when we do the song Heathens by 21 Pilots, mm -hmm. um, it's about being in jail and making friends and having like your click and all this. And my buddy, uh, we have like this like fake like gun. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't take the gun thing to... It's very controversial right now. Yeah, right now. top button topic right now. Right now, right? So we won't get into that, but there is a spot in where I want to shoot all of the bad things out of me, all the negative. So my buddy would click the gun, boo, and the, and the bass would drop and I would fall backwards. And then somebody asked me one day, why, why, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Because it's awesome. Yeah, and, th and that's literally what I said. It was, um, how much negativity do you have in your life? Oh, he's like, a bunch. Um, I'm in debt. I'm in this. I'm in that. Shoot it out of you. And he's like, what do you mean? Shoot it out of you. And he's don't like, don't you shoot yourself? Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> but shoot it you out need of an you. Asterisk on that statement. Yeah, like just <laughs> shoot it out of you. As Louis C.K. once said, you can solve all of your problems one time. <laughs> exactly. And for me, he was like, well, the, you could talk to somebody, you, you, like for myself, you could talk to me and you can let it all out. For me on stage, we have this prop where it's boom and the bass drops and it's just, you shoot it out and you wake up to reality. That's how you should live your life. Like don't allow all the drama and the nonsense kind of get into it. So then ever since then we do it sometimes and we had that one, one person, there's always one person that will try to be like, oh, I'm gonna stop your mojo. But then when he understood, he was like, oh, that's the coolest thing in the world. Oh, do it again. So <laughs> I'm coming to the next show. Yeah, we got it. And he actually did. Really? He, he's like, shoot him. <laughs> he's like, screams it out. Shoot him again. Shoot him. He was all tight <laughs> for it now. Yeah, and then the heathens comes with, yeah, shoot it out. <laughs> that's all you hear. And boom, and the guy's going nuts. And it's just, you just connect it. <laughs> and that fan's name was Albert Einstein. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> It might have been he had gray hair, so, so it, <laughs> might have, hair. it might have been his cousin or something. I don't know. But no, it was, it, you always have controversy out throughout this stuff, and it's, yeah, you just gotta you have to learn how to sell it to him. Yes, and that's how I sold it to him, which is shoot all of your promises out or all, all of those issues and everything out, just not with a real gun. You start, you, you know, use you a get, fake gun. You can borrow you, ours. Yeah, yeah, cat gun. <laughs> but no, and then we stopped it for a while. Well, I did want to ask. This is a little bit changing subjects a little bit, but. I was uh, casually browsing your website, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, MySpace, and Thank Google you. Plus account, uh, and I wanted to ask you about something on your Instagram. Okay. On the Chaplain the Kid Instagram. Okay. Uh, do you have all the other members of your band locked up in your basement, and are you forcing them to make bodacious beats against their will? Because I have not seen a single picture of them on the Instagram. <laughs> Hashtag <What>? Chaplain the Kidnapped. <laughs> You had a lot of time to think of that one, didn't you? I did. I'm very proud Are they of locked up in the basement? <laughs> um <Bodacious. laughs> Chaplin. If the we kid. get enough if we get enough comments on the video that says hashtag Chaplin the kidnap, we will launch a full scale investigation. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um hmm. It's a good question. Next your honor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he uh, pleads the fifth. Yeah. Um no, it was just more of um, trying to give them the proper way of announcing them, which is we have a music video tomorrow that we're doing. Ooh. And the band finally is a part of it. And for me, I'll be honest, I was scared to even put members uh, in this project because it was my solo project. It was my baby. It was everything that I wanted. And we had multiple artists that would come in and out and they would just abuse it. So I was like, I'm never putting an artist on there because every time we have this like bad luck of when we get new pictures done, somebody leaves. And we've had that. And I'm just like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna delete all the pictures. I used to have them out there. Uh, I just deleted them all. <laughs> and you know, because people are like, dang, how do you got like 29 pictures and you got like over 10,000 people? That was because I was a drummer uh, and I still am for SJC Custom Drums and a ton of people came over and followed us. And I mean, this they're the third biggest drum company in the world. Wow. Uh, Josh Dunn from 21 Pilots, Jay Weinberg from Slipknot, Trey Cool from Green Day. They all drum yeah. uh, on there. So we all know them. So we had a ton of followers that came over to the Instagram like instantly. I'm like, can you like bring them over to our Facebook? We got like a little over 2,000. We got 10,000 over here. But yes, the chaplain, the kidnap might be, I don't know. I, you don't know if you have people chained up in your basement. 
Well, we, we, I can't. I can't tell you that. Ah, uh, he doesn't want to incriminate himself. <laughs> is yeah. what it is. I, can, I, I can't tell you that, but I will say that that might have to be a T-shirt. Chaplin the kidnapped hashtag. You're welcome. That that's that's yours. We won't uh we won't copyright now, that. I'll one give you, you all full. All yeah. uh, that was all your idea. We no? just want one T-shirt. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, make it two. There's two of us. That's true. The case of no, uh, we'll on the hashtag the Chaplin the kid. I, I will do it if you guys. If you guys hashtag it and you get a bunch of people to share it, I will make that t-shirt and that's on your podcast that is set in stone. <laughs> if you make that hashtag happen and people are like, yo, this is awesome, <laughs> and make it a little theory, I will make it into a song and a t-shirt. It's a deal. It's a deal. We're Nobody right. listens to the show. I was going to say, we got a grand total of like five people listening. <laughs> hey, but, those five, but let me tell you, those five people will turn into 50 people. But yeah, no, I don't know. <clears throat> they're, they're somewhere. They might be with our new character. I mean, I know we have a character. His name is Dexter Niles. Tell us about Dexter. So Dexter is the superhero of all problems. Um, when you have anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, anything, bullying factors, Dexter is there for you. Uh, he wears a ski mask, does not like showing his face. He does not like to show you what he looks like because underneath all of the issues, he's burnt. He's burnt out of the problems that p kids go through. Kids give up their lives, and sometimes I don't think that we get to hear them fully. And I feel that they have an unspoken voice that they only put it in a, in a book, and then the book gets thrown away, and then the kids get thrown away. So Dexter Niles is this, is this character. He was my imaginary friend, uh, true story, throughout my whole life when I was a kid. I named him Dexter and didn't, I mean, I wasn't cool enough to come up with Niles when I was a young kid, <laughs> but I had a friend named Dexter and he was the same age as me. And as my music progressed, he grew up with me. And 10 years ago, I um, wanted to put him to, to sleep because I, I really wanted to be a better person. Um, and then my anger issues started to come out after I started seeing a lot of issues through music. I mean, you, you drink a lot, you stress a lot. Um, you lose a lot of your family. You used to get disconnected from your family. So um, Dexter was kind of that guy that was that dark, like kind of like very deep voice in my head um, that was just telling me to get through. You're okay, um, but I'm still sleeping. So if you ever need me, you just wake me up and I'll be there for you. And for myself, I was like, okay, um, it's time to wake up Dex. And Dexter Niles became uh, this one entity. And now he comes out and he comes uh, to our every show. And he has his mask on and he starts off every show. Uh, what he likes to do is if you're a bully, he will talk to you and he will change you. And he wants to be your best friend. So when you notice that um, in any of the music videos that we will come out to with in the future, you will see him and he will never take off his mask. Um, and then people will say, well, hold on. I saw the mask at a show and you ripped it off. What's that mean? You'll figure that out. What does it mean? You'll, maybe Illuminati confirmed. Chaplain, <laughs> Chaplain the kidnap, maybe. I don't know. But you. But that that is where the story stops. So, so for us, Dexter Niles is like our saving point. So to everybody that listens, um, it doesn't matter, white, black, Chinese, Spanish, um, if you like the same gender, whatever. If you're bullied, we hear you. We want, to, we want to bring you in. We love you. And we want Dexter to be best friends with you. And we promise that Chaplin the Kid will always voice for you. And then we will allow you to voice for yourself in our music. I think that's a great message. Well, well we welcome Dexter in the new world as yeah. it becomes more and more divisive. Of course, uh, you can be who you want to be just as a... Absolutely. Be who you want to be. Don't allow anybody to tell you anything differently. Because if you do... It's not a world you want to live in. That's why it's like religion and politics are never like the two things you don't talk about. And we never put it in our music, but anytime that somebody came up to me that's religious or political, I listened to them. Because I'm just like, dude, please talk to me. I mean, I going to church every, every Sunday being a kid, I just, I, I always learn to accept and to love and to just bring whoever you are. If you're good, bad, evil, come on in. Because one day you'll, you'll be able to figure yourself out. And it's always cool. It's always a good thing. So you got to step up for the people if you want the people to love you. Yeah, you kind of have to be that catalyst for them. You have to be almost a martyr in that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, you have to be that that 150% mm -hmm. of what exactly what, what's coming out. Oh, you. yeah. And we go back to history, you know, Martin Luther King, any of those. That's what they were doing. It's that we were speaking for the people and, um, you know, and even John F. Kennedy. Like there's so many historical people that we lost that if you think about it, if we still had them, how would the world be today? I feel like 100% it would be different. Yeah. 
I, I will say to that, I, I was thinking about this one time with Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. We lost him very, way oh, too soon. absolutely. And it is a tragedy that we lost him. But we never listened to a bad Jimi Hendrix album ever. So think about if he was still here, would music change? Yeah, would music change it differently? It's like, I, I don't know if I could put myself through listening to a mediocre Jimi Hendrix album. No, it's uh, like, Leonard Skinner. Oh, man, he's just, come on, Jimi, stop. Well, stop, you're hurting me. It's him, uh, Leonard, Leonard Skinner. Like, what yeah. would happen if they were still here? Like, country, southern rock might have changed. Um, Jimi Hendrix, the rock blues might have changed. Things might have been different. And that's why th these are the things that when you hear about on the news, the news is what's taking everybody away from real life. The news is what, like, they're like, this is happening. Okay, I believe it. You know, and it's not that. It's that. We just have, there's just un, uh, untitled situations that we just don't talk about and that we just can't sit down as a, just a unit of people and we just get it over with. Like, get rid of all that negative stuff. And what's so good about the United States of America? We're free. Blackjack and hookers. Blackjack and hookers. <laughs> Red Dead Redemption. Red, Red, De <laughs> Red Dead Redemption. Have you been playing the new Red Dead Redemption? Absolutely. Which, <laughs> actually. Have you seen that ending? No. Oh. Don't, don't tell me the ending. I didn't, I didn't play, but I did watch someone else play. Really? Uh, <laughs> now I've been playing just the online. <laughs> and I was like, yo, dad, come up here. Check this out. And you hear this girl in the background. <laughs> I see him. And it, it, I didn't know. I forgot like online was you can shoot each other. <laughs> and, <laughs> it was like, boom. And I was like, I looked over. I'm like, oh, whoa, what happened to my character? And he, just, he flies backwards. And it's like. Huh. Get oh, good. Okay, let's do this. And I go, get Look, good. So, <laughs> I am, the same. I'm not like a gamer, okay. really, but I do have Monster Hunter World. I love it. I've never played that yet. I can't stop playing it. Is it good? I like it. It's hard. It's very hard. And uh, so I come up to my boyfriend. I was like, how do you beat the demon red dog? Because I cannot... I I see the name on the screen and I was like, not going to try and embarrass myself. You know what I'm red talking dog. about. The yeah. demon red dog. <laughs> So when my dog gets in trouble, you get demon red dog. That's every chihuahua I've ever seen ever. <laughs> Pretty much. A little thing. Yeah. And he looked me dead in the face with no sympathy at all. He said, get good. Get good. <laughs> get good. And I was like, all right, look here, you son of a bitch. You gave me real answers. <laughs> I've tried to beat him five times and I'm going to kill the TV. So now is that game like a, um, like a Final Fantasy almost? I like turn-based? Yeah. No. So. You go out on these expeditions and kill these very large animals and you collect their body parts and make armor out of their body parts. The game rewards uh, grinding, uh, okay. killing the same monster over and over again to, uh, to get the correct armor to battle different monsters. So you get to build your own monster with the armor that you've collected. Basically, you become the monster. But guess what? They don't tell you this. Uh -oh. You got to wear all matching armor or you get no benefits. <laughs> oh, that's <some> crap. <laughs> Uh, why you get no benefits I mean, if the armor isn't matching. So you I don't can't... find that out until your boyfriend's like, why doesn't all your armor match? So I can't have like raptor legs with like Tyrannosaurus Rex arms? Like you can't oh, do that? I mean, you're that's still true. a human, but that's, that's not important. I'm not going to lie. That would be pretty That'd crazy. That would be pretty dope. That would be that game. <laughs> Skin a dinosaur and you wear it? Exactly. Okay. But the what best monster's going to fuck with you? <laughs> the best part of the whole game is you get a little companion that helps you fight and it's a little cat. I was going to say a chicken. No, I it's a little chicken. cat. A little cat. It's very cute. It yeah. looks just like my cat. Sorry, you're not a Fortnite fan, are you? I have Monster Hunter World <laughs> <laughs> and Skyrim. Okay, Skyrim. And cool. Spyro Spyro's reunited. Cool. Or what, reunited. I mean, That's I got a loot word. llama tattooed on my leg. Excuse me? <laughs> what is a loot llama? <laughs> oh, my. Oh, now listen, Explain it's, a loot llama, it's pretty bad when your father knows what a loot llama is before the, before the young adults do. Okay, so I'm a, huge, so I'm a big gamer. Uh, Fortnite. Uh, it's ah, the, it's a Fortnite thing. Fortnite, Fortnite thing. thing. Gotcha. So the loot llama is like a pinata, and it's like the biggest thing to find. They got three of them. And when I stress out about my music, got to go find a loot llama. Got to go find so, a loot llama. So we, it's loot llama time. Oh, it's loot, loot, get, get, yeah. I have a big koi fish on my leg. That's what I have. You can't was, find that in Fortnite. No. No, you can't. I've tried. I've jumped into the water. You, find you can't the, find it. <laughs> can't I was going to say, you got to find them in ponds. And then, uh, oh, I mean, if you steal one, it might be I mean, kind of crucial. It's rude to steal. You yeah. just look. 
I mean, it would die before you got it back to your house. That's true. Big. Unless you have a really nice size bucket in the back of your car. <laughs> just and a five gallon bucket. It's just like. Yeah, nothing to see here, everybody. Just koi fish in a bucket. It's just a five gallon bucket from Home Depot. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Me yeah. walking out of the Hibachi's restaurant. I actually heard a story about uh, they had just done a drug a drug bust. Oh, okay. uh, I believe I can't remember if it was local or not. Yeah. But they found an alligator that was stolen when they raided the house. Oh this, my god. The alligator was stolen from a zoo. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, how do you steal an alligator? Still uh, the same question. A lot of food. How do you steal an alligator from a from a zoo? What do you just throw it over your shoulder and walk out? I mean, they are pretty smart critters. And from what I hear, alligators uh, during the winter uh, months will actually stick their nose just just a little yep, right out the water, out of the water, and then the rest of it freezes. And then that's how they they don't need to eat; they're fine. They, all they need is just the airflow. It's pretty badass to say I'm gonna stick my nose out of some water. I'm frozen. What's up? See you in three months, fuckers. Yeah, and then you come out, it's like, pow! When I unfreeze, it's over for you hoes. Yeah, it's like you think, oh, you're just gonna keep walking on my grave, aren't you? <laughs> this is great. But yeah, I mean, but like, like you see, I mean, chapel, chapel on the Kid, uh, you know, it's fun. It's just, you know, you can, oh, right, the music, right. Yeah, we'll uh, yes. get back to that. Back to Chaplin. Yeah! It sounds like <laughs> yeah. you are a big comedy fan. A little bit. Who would you say, besides Charlie Chaplin, is your favorite comedian? Mm. Man, I mean, you, there is no way to get away from Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler mm -hmm. is great. He is aging like fine wine. He is. Just and not his movies. Kevin, uh, Kevin Hart. Uh, not his movies. Uh, uh, but Kevin Hart. I love Kevin Hart. I just saw him live this summer. Was he good? Small. He's very small. He's very, <laughs> very short. <laughs> very short, petite guy, but he's great. Packs uh, a punch. He was great. Uh, but I would, uh, yeah, I would say Kevin Hart. Uh, just, Dude, he's, he's great. Just, oh my god! Like, if I always say that, like, if I ever put him in a music video, oh. absolutely, all I would want is Deadpool. So Ryan Reynolds, Kevin Hart, game over. That is one hundred percent probably best comedy movie. And then just one small little take of Adam Sandler because that's all you need from mm -hmm. him. And like Will Ferrell, that's it. And just that's... like one second, mm -hmm. one word, boom. Yep, that's them. That's that's that just welded down all of what they do. And, you know, but there's too many of them. But, yeah, Kevin Hart has been at the top. And I want to go see him, though. That's another platform that's oversaturated. Oh, comedy, yeah. Yeah. And it's hard. I mean, it, it's everything. Um, books, authors, that's actually oversaturated, too. We just don't see it because we don't look into it. I don't see it because I only read Stephen King books. Well, there you go. <laughs> and Stephen King, I mean, look, same thing as Hank Williams, like we were talking about earlier. You don't want to change anything. Like, that guy was the epitome of horror. I'm I mean, just saying, good luck fucking copying the king. Oh, absolutely. Can't I mean, do it. It's every king. Martin Luther King, Stephen King. <laughs> Larry <laughs> King. Larry King. <laughs> I'm <laughs> coming for you, Larry King. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still you... doing stuff anymore? I don't like... even know if he's alive. <laughs> I just had that thought. I was like, no, I think he might be dead, but I'm not confident in that. No, is he? Is he still doing stuff? I think he is. He's just really, really He's old. doing stuff, it sounds like. Doesn't he have like a big beard, right? Yeah, like a... That's right, yeah. Man, and you just look at him like, bro, like, can you retire? Like, are you good? <laughs> but let me get on your show first. And then it will be all good. Yeah. Dudes, Larry King. Oh, yeah. Know that, know that feller. <laughs> Absolutely. So I did want to... We've had you on for a little while. Oh, yeah. But we want to test your musical chops here a little bit. Oh, no. We're going to play a little bit of a game. Okay. okay. Let's see if you're worth your salt. Um, yeah, I'm salty. It's... <laughs> Out of all the flavors. Can I have some pepper? <laughs> <laughs> we have Salt Bay in the other room. Hot sauce. He's been waiting. I like to get salty. So the game goes like this. It's a five-question quiz. If you, Normally, if you get three questions correct, then we, as the creators of the quiz, me and Morgan, means we're bad at making quiz and we have to do an additional shot. If you do not get that, then you would have to take an additional shot. But in this case, I say I think me and Morgan are just going to take a shot. I'll tell you, look, if I lose, I'll take a shot. If I lose, that's... Uh, no I, pressure here. No pressure. So I, hopefully I don't lose. All right. <laughs> so here we go. Heart attack, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Hey. Oh. Question one. Okay. If you play all the black notes on a piano, what kind of scale have you just played? Oh, good God. Uh, there are multiple choice questions. Okay. What's if you do want to take a stab at it without the multiple choice. Oh, God, choice, no. I'm not that, if I was that good, take the whole bottle. Yeah, if you want to run the gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, no, okay, let's do it. Pentatonic scale. Heptatonic scale. Diatonic scale. 
Oh, God. Well, <laughs> well in, in high school, they always say go with uh, letter C, but I don't want to on this. I'm going to go with A. Are you sure? Oh, God. All right, I can give it to you. All right, do you want me to give them to you again? Absolutely. See, he's trying to help me out without helping me out. I like this. Pentatonic scale. Okay. That's our job. Heptatonic scale. Diatonic scale. I'm going with C. You're going with C? Yeah. A was the correct answer. Oh, you son of a... <laughs> Can you tell me what B is? Is that a That's thing? A is that a made-up <laughs> word? Uh, heptatonic is a five-point scale. I'm just saying it kind of sounds like a disease. Heptatonic? Man, I got a lot of heptatonic going on. I mean, it sounds like hep uh, hepatitis. No, here, here's that's the what thing, I keep though. hearing. I'm calling that one a correct one because I said A first, and then he was like, nah, that's not it. <laughs> Unfortunately, you said C as your <laughs> final answer. If we were on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Did I ever say you would have been answer? buzzed out. It's okay. <laughs> you thought we were your friends. I thought you were. All right, here we question go. Question two. What is the lower vocal range? Oh, my God. Alto? Soprano? Contra alto? Good God, never heard of Contra Alto. Oh, God. And I'm a singer and you're going to throw this one at me. Say them again for me. Uh -huh. Alto, soprano, Contra Alto. Oh, my God. Well, oh, my God. I suck at this. Oh, geez. So if I had to guess, it's either B or C. It's not. It's, it's not A. No way. Oh, my God. You guys suck at this. Uh, no, I think you I'm, mean we rock at this. I'm going to say C. You sure? Yeah. All right. C is the correct answer. You're on the board. <laughs> yeah, thank God. <laughs> One for Chaplin the Kid. I do have a question. Is baritone lower than the than the C answer? Yes. All right. What what, what makes that different than than alto, than normal alto? Uh, contra alto versus alto? Mm -hmm. So contra alto is just a little bit lower. Why wouldn't that? All right. I'm sorry. I'm thinking too much about it. I don't know Italian. <laughs> I was going to say, why wouldn't it just be baritone? But look, I don't make the rules. It's like an in-between. Fine. I believe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a singer. Ask him. <laughs> I just got, I saw red for just a second. I was like, why wouldn't you just be one or the other? Yeah, I just sing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know what I am. I just sing. But that's a good one. So now I know. All right. This one's more on the country music side. I was under the impression that you knew a little more about country music cause, uh, off of like the uh, couple of songs that I researched about you. Um, you, have, you. It was pretty, it has a bit of a country twist, so I thought. In all honesty, uh, no. Uh, You're about I, to have a bad time. I, You're I, about to have uh, a bad okay. time. Okay, I, I actually never really listened to much country well, uh, because I was, I was actually wanting to be more alternative. But uh, before I got the booking agent that I have now, uh, the the guy actually was on the country realm. So he was like, if you do this, I could sell you out more. So I was like, okay, I'll try country. So yeah, absolutely. Nah, yeah. Well, it, mainly the reason that a lot of these questions are country is mm. because when you Google country, you get a very definite definition. When you oh, Google, absolutely. When you Google alternative, it's across the spectrum. <laughs> it's game over. It's Nobody everywhere. knows what alternative actually is. It's or pretty much it everything like. combined. Yeah. If you, yeah. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got. Question three. Jolene is a classic American country tune about a woman who's afraid of her husband cheating on her with a beautiful redhead. Who wrote and sang this song in 1973? Oh my god. Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, or June Carter? I'm going to say Dolly Parton. You sure? Yes. That is correct. Two for two. Yeah. There it two is. for three. I, I, I was count. I was wondering about how good you are accounting for a second. I'm really bad at it. Yeah, Do Dolly Parton <laughs> is. She did bomb diggity at that. Have you ever taken a look at uh, the mu uh, musical aspect of that? Actually, like the guitar riff in that whole song. No. It is insanity. Really. All I know is she was, she, she still is. I mean, I don't care what anybody says. She's still beautiful. She's a bombshell. She is, she is. great to mm. look at. She is pretty. I'm not going to lie. And then her younger pit. What? Mm. How it. dare Jolene she can step on Dolly Parton's turn. Yes. I mean, that and uh, Betty White. Betty White's my girl. Betty White. I you have come to the right place. Oh, uh, you have unleashed. I'm, I mean, I'm about to get a, I'm about to get a Betty, Betty White, White tattoo soon. So I, I am <laughs> the biggest oh, Golden yeah. Girls oh. fan. We were we were talking about doing the Betty White Golden Girl, and then like uh, they one of my friends did a tattoo of one of the ladies, and across her glasses, I think it was the oldest one, it said Golden Girl, <laughs> off her lens. That's I was awesome. like, yo, that Which is. Which one do you think was the oldest one? The short lady. 
Wrong. It was B. Arthur, the tallest one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very aggressive. <laughs> I only liked Betty White. That's all I looked at. Betty White <laughs> is the third oldest. Yeah. Uh, actually, no, she's she is in fact older than the shortest one. Really? Mm-hmm. She don't look it. I know. <laughs> she, yeah. she didn't look that at all. Well, it's great. Oh yeah. I'm so sorry to interrupt your quiz. No, he please said Betty White, it's his fault. Listen, Betty you, White's great. I mean, you guys want to keep talking about sexy Betty White for a while. I mean, <laughs> keep on rolling. Question four. Okay. I'm really, I'm really interested if you get this one. Okay. Johnny Cash is one of the most influential musicians of the 20th century okay. and was known for his melodic sorrow themes. Which song was not by the man in black? Get Rhythm. Ode to Billy Joe. Hey Porter. Mm. Say them again. This, dude, that's not. This is not him. It's not his. Okay. Get rhythm. Ode to Billy Joe. Hey Porter. Oh, I know. I know it's not A. Uh, I'm thinking the second one. That's what I'm thinking. Whew. I'm going to say the second one. Number two? That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. That is correct. All right. He's officially made it. Yeah. Let's do the last one then. One more, <laughs> just for can... fun. See if yeah. you can get four to five. Just out of curiosity, was there some side action? Was there maybe some uh, twos going on no. from the couch? No. Didn't seem like Didn't it. Didn't seem like uh, it. No. Maybe not the ode part. Yeah, the ode. Yeah, that it throws was... me off, yeah. Okay, let's say. Let's do the last one for giggles. Question five. Okay. Passing away at the young age of 29, this Alabama singer-songwriter was best known for Hey Good Lookin', Your Cheatin' Heart, and Love Sick Blues. Who is he? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I got the last one right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hey Good Lookin', oh. Hey Good Lookin', Your Cheatin' Heart, and Love Sick Blues. Oh, my God. <laughs> I knew the songs. Uh, well. They're amazing songs. Yes. Oh, Super iconic. Well, thank God I got the last one right because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Well, I, I hear the options. Okay. Jimmy Rogers, Hank Snow, or Hank Williams? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go with C because I, I, Hank Williams is the only known one I, I, that I know. Of course it's Hank Williams. <laughs> it went to amazing. Snow. Can you say A again? Jimmy Rogers. You don't know who Jimmy Rogers is? I don't listen to country like that. I don't oh, know who Jimmy Rogers is either. Like, I really, I really, like, look, look, I don't, like, it's these funny. off the internet. I never, <laughs> I never really listened to country until uh, I did this style. I, none. Um, that's why when people talk about, like, these, these new country artists mm -hmm. and their pop, it's, it's not pop. It's new generation. I gotta say. It's a new generation. I just like the sounding of the music. I really do. I love the way they use it. Like the slide guitar was my favorite. Uh, banjo, uh, everything. And, and that's where I think that it intrigued me more to do that style of music because it wasn't my first choice. It was more of like your indie rock, alternative rock at, at one point. And then... Um, that's why when I saw you, I... I um... I heard so much that it sounded like the 21 Pilots, mm -hmm. but then when I Googled you, oh, well, I didn't Google. I, uh, Bing. YouTubed. Bing. She... I YouTubed you, mm -hmm. and all of, all of the ones that came up were very uh, country-ish, mm -hmm. and I was a little surprised, because I, when I saw you, I was like, huh, that does not match up. It was just because I wanted to connect with the, the younger crowd. Like, I know a lot of people love country. Uh, I, I know, but... Got to appeal these kids. You do, you do. You can't appeal yourself. You have to appeal the to people. the audience. Yeah, and it's like, it, Freddie. Freddie said it himself. Like they asked, like, what makes you different? We are four misfits playing for a bunch of other misfits, and that's what you have to look at it as. So for me, what if I was them? What would I like to listen to? So Twenty One, um, we would do. I did a couple couple Elvis tracks. Um, Elvis is also good. Oh, yeah. Nobody dislikes Elvis. I mean, it's like asking a hip-hop artist, do you dislike Tupac or Biggie? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. You you respect them. And, um, you know, we did the outfield. Your Love was one of my favorites. Um, and then, you know, sometimes we'll add a little synth wave, like the 80s style, Ooh. like Breakfast Club. Like we do that. We do a song called Lost Boy by The Midnight. 
Uh, they're a band now that kind of went back in time and did some 80s stuff. So yeah, we try to add a little flair of everything, but the country is where we keep it on our YouTube and then we'll go and stray away a little bit. Hmm. So you guys got to take a shot. We have to take a shot. Solidarity. Here it goes. Cheers to Chaplin the Kidnapped. To feeling good all the time. <laughs> yeah. Still not a prop. Yeah. What did you say? Still not a prop. Oh. <laughs> I thought you get said good. I almost threw up. And I was get like, good. Jesus. Just get good, guys. Get good. You would not even believe the savagery that came out of his face in that moment. Like, He's a very sweet boy. And then he just dead face looked me in the, in the eyes and said, get good. Get, just get good. There was no love there. As I'm tapping my bottle over here and the editing is going to be funny <laughs> to hear about. Um, yeah, get good, bud. I had to put my pen down because I, uh, t- yeah. I snap it all over the place I'm and it like makes that. a terrible sound. Bottles, sticks, pencils, anything with a sharp tip. Yeah. <laughs> you just throw it at somebody. No, it's just like anything that I can tap, I do all the time. Thing, like my hands. David well, has to yell at me constantly. It's okay. It's just, it's, it's a... Uh, it's a drummer thing. Exactly. It's I was going to say, drum, being a drummer, it means that you're... It that means you, you ruin, bang things. You ruin a oh, silent room for everyone. Absolutely. You it's uh, it. The funniest thing I saw is, um, it was this morning, was playing the quiet game with, oh. your, with your fans at a show. Trying to do that. So, 21 Pilots, I think they had, they were, they're in uh, Russia right now, and they did one to a, a jam-packed stadium. <laughs> How long can you guys last in being quiet? It was four seconds. Yeah. Yeah, that's accurate. That's awesome. Four seconds. Four like, seconds is And you hear this guy long. going, play For, um, another song. And then they say, like, stop it. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> and it's just like, I want, I'm going to do that one day. I want to try that out with our fans. Because I know that once we bring all that energy that like you said you've seen, nobody's going to want to be silent. Everybody's going to want to be like, oh, no, give me more. So, yeah, we got, we, we're working on some new stuff. Um, my favorite thing that I've seen at uh, the past couple of shows I've went to is everybody that's been up there has been, I want to see how long everybody here can not look at their phone. Yeah. Yeah. I saw Rob Zombie and I saw Florence and the Machine oh, okay. and they both did it. It was not long. It was at the Rob Zombie one. It didn't even happen. Nobody put their phone away. There was at least one person with their phone out. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people want to kind of have that memory where they can videotape something. Yeah. I think I'm paying that $100 have... a ticket. I'm taking a fucking picture. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Especially with Rob Zombie. He was like, has insane shows. It was oh, yeah. incredible. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, with uh, John Five as his guitar player. Oh, Johnny Five. Yeah. Yeah, John Five writes all, actually, all of his horror film uh, songs. He writes them all. Really? Yeah, him and uh, Johnny, or John Five and uh, is like the crazy, crazy guy like behind all the music. That is awesome. So Rob Zombie, like, I mean, that's why those two connect. So Rob Zombie and John Five, anytime you hear it, so those two. Yeah, always. So uh, tell us, what's going on? What's going on in your life? What do you have coming up? <clears throat> uh, well, we took, we've taken a couple, couple months off because uh, my father actually did have a heart attack. Um, he had uh, triple bypass surgery. Um, mm. and so we wanted to take a couple That's months. That's all. Yeah. It, oh, it was <laughs> terrible. Man, no. watching that was awful. I bet. Good to see that you're doing well. He's here with you. He is. Uh, shout out to my dad. You know, my manager, he's been, been like the key to all the music stuff that we do. But right now we've, we're taking uh, February to do a bunch of interviews and getting to hang out with cool people like you guys. And, uh, and then starting in March, we have our CD release show March 9th at uh, Stubini's Tavern in Carney's Point, which is going to be really cool. Um, so if you guys ever want to come out to a show and come see the CD release, that's going to be fun. Uh, we have a music video tomorrow uh, during the afternoon. We're going to do it at Full Moon Saloon, so everybody's allowed to be a part of it. You get to be in the music video. They will... Um, you get to drink whiskey and do whatever you want. It's in a saloon. It's called Full Moon Saloon uh, out in Cecilton, Maryland. Yes. I think from here, it's like 35 minutes. I was going to say, Maryland's not that far. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's going to be cool. It's going to be starting at 12 o'clock. <clears throat> so if anybody wants to come out, it's going to be real fun. Um, and then from there, we're going to be doing, uh, oh, March 2nd, we're singing a national anthem over at the Boys and Girls Club for their wrestling uh, entertainment, which is going to be cool. And we're going to be doing a signing there. So that's going to be cool. Wrestling and Chaplin the Kid goes well together. Make sure to bring the lyrics. Yes. I, yeah. I've seen musicians forget the lyrics of the national anthem. Oh, yeah. I did it for oh, NASCAR on, na- on national television. Did and, you? Yeah, I did the stanky leg the whole time because my knee was just <laughs> <laughs> was 
going nuts. And <laughs> it was terrible. Like I remember he was videotaping me and I'm like singing it and all of a sudden the leg just went doom, 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 doom. and I'm just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold, I'm, and I held the rail like you can watch this. It was great. But yeah, so those things are like our primary things and then we have some more stuff gonna be coming up in the summer but the CD release show and the uh, March 2nd uh, National Anthem are like our two biggest ones right now. So hopefully we'll see you guys out there if you can. And where can people keep updated about what you're doing? So you can go on Facebook, Chaplin the Kid, uh, Instagram, Chaplin the Kid Official. Uh, go to our website, www.chaplinthekid.com. And we have a Twitter, but I don't like it. I mean, I really don't. I don't Twitter's like, tough. Twitter's it, weird. It, it is. Like, I mean, I don't use it, but we have one. It's Chaplin the Kid. But look, anytime you guys want to write us, be a part of music videos, let us know. We, we kind of are just... Open the door. Come on in. Let's do it. Let's have fun. Let's and, do it together. And you guys take shots a lot, so you might want to come out to the music video tomorrow. I'm just saying. You might need to. It's kind of our thing. <laughs> Shoot some shots, be in a music video. Hell yeah. That is awesome. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Appreciate we had a great time. We learned a lot about your music. We yeah. had some laughs. We talked about Red Dead. Red Dead. Absolutely. And some Fortnite. Once again, thank you very much for coming thank you, on the buddy. show. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You are now listening to the song On Fire by Chaplin the Kid. Say that one more time. Pat, you were correct. <laughs> For the bloopers. <laughs>